There's no one on yet. There's no one on. We're just chilling here by ourselves. <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cooking with Jay Wu. My name is Chef Ted McCall. I am a faculty member here at the Providence campus, as well as a former faculty member at our Charlotte, North Carolina campus. I am a department chair for um, the nutrition and science and product development program. I am a 2000 graduate of the food service management program and an 04 graduate of the Masters of Art in Teaching. I currently hold a doctorate from Northeastern University in higher education academic administration. So um, again, thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to make a couple dishes here today. During this time, um, please do not hesitate to ask any questions that you have, whether that be about Johns Wells University as an institution, whether we're going to be talking about the dishes, or anything else that you really want to know about uh, myself or the institution. Um, with me today, I have my oldest daughter, Bailey, um, filming for us, and my wife and daughter, and um, one of my neighbors is here joining us today. He's going to be uh, having a little bit of the food that we make. So without further ado, if uh, nobody has any questions, we'll get right into the two dishes we're going to make. We're going to make uh, chicken piccata. Uh, I was going to make chicken marsala, but I thought it would be a little bit easier for you to pick up the ingredients for chicken piccata, uh, considering you don't uh, actually have the readily available marsala wine. Uh, and we're also going to make a staple in my house, which is um, uh, haricot vert au beurre uh, with garlic, or French style green beans and butter, and we're going to add some garlic. And my oldest is actually going to make that dish for us because uh, that, like I said, is a staple in my household. So uh, the ingredients that we have today, um, we have the French style green beans and garlic. Um, we also have some chicken stock, some heavy cream, some whole butter, some fresh squeezed lemon juice. We have some capers and again, some other whole butter and then white wine. And I said earlier um, in when I put this together for the university that the white wine uh, was optional. I had a friend of mine reach out to me and say white wine is never optional. Uh, but in this dish, it is one of those optional items. If you do not have white wine, um, then it's okay just to have chicken stock. If you don't have chicken stock, that's okay. You can just use water. But by eliminating those two ingredients, what you're doing is eliminating flavor and you need to blend and build flavor uh, because we're traditionally doing what is known as sautéing here and sautéing is a um, is a restaurant style technique that you'll be using over and over again uh, throughout your curriculum here at Johnson Wales. Um, you learn that immediately in your very first cooking class and then you take care of that throughout your entire career um, here and your industry career. Um, we're going to not only saute, we're going to basically do a butter emulsion sauce. And because we're utilizing the stock and the wine, we'll also be doing uh, uh, what's known as reduction or reduce all sec or to reduce almost dry. Uh, I have an interesting ingredient here, um, which is something that one of my own children um, did not enjoy when she tried it. Um, it's the one holding the camera. And uh, these are capers. Um, these are basically the flowers of the caper bush. And they have been um, plucked and then salt brined. Um, and then they are easily readily available at your grocery store. So if you don't have capers, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but what you're missing is that acidic, briny flavor that is really important when you're talking about culinary, especially when you're doing a, um, a dish a la minute, because utilizing the acid and um, seasoning is the highlight of bringing out your flavor in your dishes. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and take our chicken, we're gonna pound that out, uh, we're gonna go ahead and mince up some garlic, 
and then we'll go ahead and season and dredge the chicken and then we'll go ahead and pan sear that and remove that from the pan and then we'll go ahead and build our sauce in the pan we'll return our chicken into the dish uh, in the pan again let that finish let that blend those flavors together um, and after that we'll go ahead like I said and let my oldest go ahead and um, make and finish the green beans and uh, the green beans I already have blanched and shocked right here these are the French style green beans uh, not the ones from the can um, these are actually fresh I picked these up here locally at Aldi because they're readily available any questions so far no questions great so they're readily available at Aldi and um, so the reason I chose French style green beans is because uh, these are much more tender and uh, you actually can cook them without blanching and shocking them or pre-cooking them and so these are actually blanched and shocked meaning I went ahead and steamed them and then uh, shocked them in the ice water so that they stop cooking and so they're really really soft and tender right now where this is not and you know your your um, American green beans right off our vines um, are rather thick waxy and they're a little bit more difficult okay and so to understand how to play with these green beans is that this end is the vine end and this is the fine end okay so you want to make sure that you do not take that little piece off that is the show piece um, or as I used to teach when I was teaching students how to make eggs it's the show side of the green bean this is the no side this is where it's trimmed off the bush and excuse me the vine and all you want to do there is make sure you either take that piece off so you have a fresh cut there um, and dispose of that okay so we'll go ahead and we'll pound out this chicken um, when we're talking about chicken uh, we want to see that what, what I'm using right here is, is something that's really easily available is chicken tenders uh, last uh, Demo you had the chef of the Boston Bruins uh, Teaching you how to utilize chicken tenders in his famous cornmeal sauce uh, Excuse me cornmeal breading and um, his honey mustard sauce And so I decided because of that to go ahead and also use chicken tenders so that you would have two uses of chicken tenders uh, and you'll see that chicken tenders, it's thick on one end and thin on the other, just like a chicken breast. So if this was a chicken breast, all you would have to do is take that breast and go ahead and slice it from one end to the other, and then do the same thing that I'm gonna do right here. Uh, you'll notice that I'm using a Ziploc bag, actually, the brand name Ziploc. And um, I do this because it's easier to contain than just using plastic wrap. So I'm just going to lightly utilize the flat side of a mallet versus the tenderizing side of the mallet, okay? If you use the tenderizing side of the mallet, then you're going to tear it, poke a lot of holes in it. So flat side, and I'm just gently pounding. I'm trying to get this big fat end the same size as this thin end. So just see how easy that was to make it the same size. And I'll do that with all of it. And that's how easy it is to go ahead and pound out these chicken tenders. So I'm now going to take these and I am going to put them on this plate because I'm going to season them before I put them in the flour. And the reason that I season them before I put them in the flour instead of seasoning the flour is because it's just a great habit to get into seasoning your food prior to cooking it. And it's also um, a great habit to not season your breadings because if this breading is going into an oil that you're continuously using for like bacon fried chicken the the seasonings go ahead and burn in the oil and then you start to get little burnt bits on your um, food from the oil so I'm seasoning here with a 90 10 mix of salt and black pepper if you were using white pepper that's fine white pepper is great for finishing for show and um, it's it's really a little bit uh, stronger than black pepper so 
flipping it over, I'm gonna season the other side. A lot of people ask, why do you season both sides? Um, because it has two sides. Uh, so I always season both sides of my food before. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna turn my pan on here. And now this is an electric cooktop and understand that cooking on electric is a little bit more difficult when sauteing and searing because, well, needless to say, I can't control the heat as easily with the control knobs as I could if I was with gas. If I was gas, I can turn it up high and turn it down low. Uh, on an electric cooktop, it gets the element hot, heats the glass, and it does not go opposite too quickly. So while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and take my tenders or my pounded tenders and I'm going to dredge them in flour. And so does anyone have any questions so far, Bailey? No? Okay. I wonder if any of my old students are watching because they would know what's going to come next when I talk about sauteing. And when it comes to sauteing, um, the first thing you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm heating the pan. Um, heat the pan, then heat the fat. So I've got the pan nicely warming up and then I have some whole butter. In addition to whole butter, I'm also going to use some um, olive oil and I'm not using extra virgin olive oil. I'm using um, regular olive oil because this has less sugar in it than extra virgin olive oil and therefore it has a higher uh, smoke point. And yeah, got a question? Um, David wants to know what's your favorite memory of studying at JWU? My favorite memory of studying at JWU. Okay, so I guess my favorite memory of studying at JWU was uh, the faculty and uh, actually one of the lifelong relationships that I made. Uh, and, and that's part of you know, the college experience is the relationships in which you make those bonds with other students that you make. Um, and I have a friend who for 20 years we're still in contact with. He's down in uh, Austin, Texas right now. So that and then the faculty to this day, um, it's great to not only continue working at Johnson & Wales, but I mean, it's been 19 years and uh, I'm working with faculty who were my faculty and there's still great people with an incredible amount of knowledge. So those, those are my two favorite things, I guess. And Sharon wants to know if the butter should be cold. Oh, well, this butter does not matter. Um, she is correct that the butter should be cold at the end, right? So this butter just came out of the refrigerator. So you'll notice it is pretty hard, but for this process, it does not matter um, if the butter is cold. At the end of the process, Sharon, you are absolutely correct. That butter needs to be cold because you don't want it to hit the pan like it is now and break. So when we're making this pan sauce, so I went ahead and basically made um, in the pan fortified butter. If I was making true fortified butter, I would utilize um, clarified butter, which is butter that's been reduced to remove all this foam or the sugar so you have a higher smoke point. And then, you hear it? Mm. You don't hear the sizzle no more, right? That means that I've gone ahead and I've cooked off the oil, excuse me, I've cooked off the water from the butter. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add my chicken into the pan, shaking off the excess flour. And this is one of those points where I need to remember that I'm on an electric cooktop and not a gas cooktop and pull it off to the side and that's how you cool down a pan that is on an electric cooktop uh, versus a uh, gas cooktop because I can just turn down the gas right now but I can't do that the glass will still very stay very hot. Um, David wants to know what age you started cooking at. Oh gosh. David, great question. I started cooking um, as far back as I can remember. Uh, I learned from my Sicilian mother as well as my Sicilian grandmother. They're the ones who put the love of food into me. 
So that is as early as I can remember. My first job in the food service industry was actually a deli clerk um, in a grocery store uh, up in the South Shore of Boston. Good? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that you'll notice it calmed down pretty quickly. Again, if I was not on an electric cooktop, that would be easier. But if you're on an electric cooktop, go ahead and understand that you can just remove it from the heat. Even if you're on a gas cooktop, you can remember that you can remove it from the heat as well to cool it down. So one thing we have to remember right off the point is that I'm letting this cook. Have to let it cook. Getting a nice sear on it. Nice browning of the butter. And that's coming from the sugars. I'm gonna turn it over and you notice it's nice and brown. Any other questions there? Nope. Nope? Okay. And I'm using a fork. You can use tongs to go ahead and turn your chicken if you want. I'm just as comfortable with a fork. Anything in your hand that is comfortable for you to utilize. Again, it gets heavy. I can just take it off, put it to the side on this electric cooktop, and it is still cooking. The pan's still hot. The fat is still hot, so it's browning up this nicely. And I have the sizzle platter here. And that sizzle platter is going to be utilized if I was doing a large batch, which I did for my family already. We already have a large batch of chicken cooked. Yes. Um. Jen wants to know if there's a difference between using an egg mixture with flour and just egg. Nope, just flour. An egg mixture? So if you were using an egg mixture, you would be using a third component. So I guess what you're asking is if I was using egg, then I would have a third component. It wouldn't just be flour. It would be flour, then an egg wash, and then something else. Something else such as what you learned last demo from our chef at the Boston Bruins. And what he did um, was a flour, egg wash, and then go ahead and he utilized um, his cornmeal. And so I went ahead and I had this, and I got a little bit too much fat in there, so I took the fat out. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and do something that isn't in a lot of piccata recipes. I'm gonna add some garlic, um, because who doesn't like garlic? Yep. Nick wants to know what campus you studied at. What campus I studied at? Yep. I studied at the Providence campus. I am from the South Shore of Boston, so it was only natural that I studied here. And I studied late, I was 28 when I came to the campus, so you notice real quickly the garlic was toasted. So my next step is I'm going to add a little bit of white wine. I'm going to build those flavors. David uh, wants to know if you want me and Maddie to become chefs like you. Do I? I want my daughters to live their dream. Uh, my dream was to be a chef, and after I experienced that, um, as well as a little stint. Um, in the Marine Corps. I also um, had the opportunity to run several other restaurants and if their desire is to be a chef then absolutely but I know that their desires are not to be a chef since the one holding the camera is studying to be a nurse at Simmons University in Boston and the other young lady is um, going into the physical arts um, notably architecture. So I am reducing this wine down to the point where it's 
almost completely gone or to all set. I'm getting some nice colors building here. I've got the garlic. You don't have smell-o-vision, so you can't see the garlic. Uh, excuse me, you can't smell this garlic and white wine. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is now that I've got it completely to the point where it's almost dry, is I'm gonna go ahead and add the boost of flavor, which is my lemon juice. That's gonna be really, really the key component in this dish. And that was about three tablespoons of lemon juice. And then I'm gonna add about a quarter cup of chicken stock. And those are going to sit here and I'm actually gonna pop them on a back burner. And I'm gonna let that reduce more. So that way we can talk about our next component or our dish. So with the green beans, um, you know, we're gonna also add some more garlic. So I have a clove of garlic that I'm just gonna go ahead and smash. Smash with my handy dandy um, Wusthof knife. My wife gave me um, basically the week I started at Johnson & Wales. Um, so I still have it. Um, quality knives will last you a lifetime as long as you maintain them and do not ever put them in the dishwasher. Yeah. Nick wants to know if you have any advice for a student going to JWU in August to study culinary and if you have a personal opinion on the best dorm. Um, personal opinion on the best dorm, uh, I did not stay in the dorms. I stayed um, in an apartment because again, when I started at Johnson Wales, I was older. So me and my wife got an apartment in North Providence. Um, I believe freshman housing um, is in east, west, north, as well as up at the hospitality center, um, which I don't believe they call that the hospitality center anymore. Somebody out there in alumni world tell me what they call the hospitality center now because it is completely losing my mind. And so advice to somebody who's coming in in August, are they coming in as a freshman? Yeah. Okay, so my advice to you is the last ingredient in this recipe is I asked you to bring passion and motivation. So passion for cooking and motivation for your studies. So if you bring those two things with you, you should be very successful. Um, because again, we're here to learn. And if you have passion and motivation, um, you absorb the knowledge that we are trying to help you absorb and you'll do just fine. Understand that uh, you're going to be on your feet a lot. So sometime at the beginning of August, make sure you get up off the couch and get in a little bit of that uh, school ready shape versus uh, summer chilling shape. Any other questions? Okay. So I went ahead and I smashed that. Um, oh, let's talk about this cutting board for a second. Um, I wonder if uh, this gentleman is watching. Um, I had students many, many years ago um, down at the Charlotte campus, um, Jennifer, and Holy City Woods is where this cutting board came from. Brett and Jennifer Cunningham. Um, they make these cutting boards down in Charleston, South Carolina. And when Brett first started making cutting boards about five years ago, I immediately told Brett that I need to have one. So that's what this is. This is one of Brett's first cutting boards. He does so many great things now. So he's an alumni of the Charlotte campus. His wife's an alumni of the Charlotte campus. They work in restaurants in the Charleston, um, downtown Charleston. And as a side hobby, Brett makes cutting boards. So if you're looking for an extremely nice, high quality cutting board, he hand um, designs everything and then uh, makes beautiful pieces. So, David also wants to know what has been your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement? Wow, that's a great culinary achievement. He's asked both, what? chef and then just in general. In general, my greatest achievement is my three titles that I earned 
Um, in my life, um, three titles that were earned and not given. One of them is that of um, a Marine. So the other is the word daddy. I'm not a father, I'm a daddy on purpose. And my, fur, my third greatest achievement is uh, earning my doctorate in 2014. Uh, professionally, um, I tie it back to what the Marine Corps taught me about um, anything, uh, and that is um, improvise, adapt, and overcome, especially during the last three and a half months, we've all learned to improvise and adapt and overcome some more. So this dish is sought, excuse me, has uh, reduced by about half, and I'm gonna let it reduce a little bit more. And um, this is actually some of the sauce, well I just put a little bit too much water in there from the lid, uh, that I made earlier, because what I'm showing you is one serving of this dish. And since I have to feed my family, uh, I made up another four servings uh, earlier, before we went live and went ahead and uh, I have that warming in the oven and I have the sauce uh, warming right there uh, on low and now just a little bit more. What is your favorite show to binge watch? My favorite show to binge watch? What are we watching right now honey? Oh we're watching a show on is it Paramount? Paramount Television called Yellowstone. One of my favorite uh, actors, Kevin Costner, is a, um, a ranch owner. And uh, I wouldn't say that he's a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? An honest ranch owner, yes, he is a ranch owner. Great show. Um, one of my favorite shows of all time is The Viking. Um, my other uh, binge watching Obviously, Game of Thrones was, you know, I could watch that over and over and over again. That's it? That's it? Okay. So, you'll notice I went to AWSEC again with my flavor building, my stock, my lemon juice, and, and my lemon juice was easy. All I did was take a lemon, you know, you roll it out, break up the fibers, I cut it in half, and then I went ahead and I cheated by using one of these handy dandy guys. Um, just going ahead and twisting it right in there. But I did that over a screen so that way I could catch all the seeds. And we'll go ahead and use that to finish a little bit. So I've got this off sec. And now if I was in a restaurant, all I would do right now is take my, whatever that young lady's name was earlier. I don't know. Sharon? Uh, Sharon? Maybe? Maybe. And talked about cold butter cold butter into this dish so that way we can go ahead now and you'll notice I'm off the heat I'm not on the back burner anymore I put my cold butter in and I'm swirling my butter and I'm making an emulsification right now so I sauteed and I'm layering and now I'm finishing by you notice just swirling in the cold butter. If this was room temperature butter, it would break too easily and separate, and that's not what we want. If you're doing what I did for a larger, more batch size for your home cook, what you can do right now is take a little bit of heavy cream and add it to that, and that'll allow you to go ahead and hold this sauce because heavy cream is the only dairy product that really won't break because it has the ability to um, withstand the heat. And then I went ahead and put in the staple of a chicken piccata, which is the caper berry. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that back on the heat. I'm going to add my chicken to this. that burner off and for those of you who like a little flare square up my lemon make a slice and I'll cut that into 
some triangles and I'll use this as some garnish on my plate if I'm going there, making sure I don't put seeds in. Again, and I don't get a profit or anything off this, but Holy City Woods, if you're looking for a great cutting board. Again, a little cream to stabilize the sauce. And then now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna leave this right here. I'm gonna go ahead, put this pan here. Make sure I use my burner well. And I'm going to go ahead and switch with my beautiful daughter here because she is, oh, I got a great thing right there. It says go Pats, absolutely go Pats. Which one first? Um, so she's going to go ahead and now she's be a little shy, right? <laughs> you gotta heat the pan, heat the fat, and then go ahead Yep, she knows, she's going right for the olive oil. And here is her butter. So, same thing. We're going to finish these green beans now by utilizing about half that butter. Okay, we're gonna utilize all that butter. <laughs> butter's better. So she said, with butter's better. So heat the pan, heat the fat. How would you fix the sauce if it was broken? Great question, Josh. Start um, over. So <laughs> Bailey just said start over, but no, if the sauce had broken, first a couple things, you gotta control the heat. The heat's really important. And again, even in this cooktop, you can pull it off. You notice my sauce is not broken. So what you could do if the sauce was broken is you could go ahead and add a couple ice cubes and cool it down and try to pull that back together. And if that doesn't work, then yes, adding some cream to it and trying to pull it back together with the cream um, is also an opportunity. You can re-emulsify a sauce by going in the opposite direction. If a butter sauce is too cold, you can go ahead and add some heat. And if a butter sauce is broken, you can go ahead and add um, some ice. So now she's adding some olive oil, because again, we are trying to make this a fortified butter. So now your garlic. I just had someone say that butter is one vowel away from better, and I absolutely believe that myself. Once in class, my friend discovered that Dijon mustard fixed a broken sauce. Absolutely correct. Dijon mustard will fix a broken sauce because Dijon mustard has an ingredient in it that is known as lecithin and um, that is like egg yolks. So, so she's toasting the garlic. After she toasts the garlic, she's gonna go ahead and basically utilize that butter and oil mixture to re-therm or reheat the green beans that have already been cooked. And since we have uh, the four of us plus company, you want these? No? Um, we have more green beans than needed. So I'm gonna come over here for her and help her control her heat. Uh, question asks, does the butter brand matter? No, I do not um, really look at brand what i look at is butter fat content and i also look at whether or not it has salt or no salt because sometimes you need salt in your butter and sometimes you don't need salt in your butter well, when i saute i use butter with salt when i bake i don't use butter with salt i have all these butter i think yep my wife is nodding her head that yes we're we're using all these butter same as the green beans all these green bean all these butter um, believe it or not yes that chicken came from all these
And now we're gonna go ahead and season the green beans with salt and pepper. Yep, it's already pre-done. Pre Notice how she's seasoning high. She's learned that from me over time, season high. Okay. So that way it spreads instead of seasoning low and you're only getting here. You hit it up here and you can spread it in the pan. I also want to go ahead and taste um, the sauce to make sure that it has the right amount of seasonings in it. Woo! That's nice and astringent. Nice coating of butter in my mouth. Nice creaminess. So I have in my two pans, oh, I can't turn, the, I was told not to turn the phone. I have my chicken piccata with a little bit of cream for that cheat that I just showed you, as well as some green beans au beurre or haricot vert au beurre with the addition of garlic. And then the final component that I have already pre-made because my daughters chose this. Um, there's, there's my chicken that I cooked earlier um, for our family. Uh, but my daughters chose a chicken and pasta rice that we're going to have with dinner. So I'll go ahead and plate this up for you. Bay, you want to get me a um, plate and take the phone back over? So three components of our dish. We have the chicken and vermicelli actually rice. We have the chicken piccata, as well as the haricot vert over. Anyone have any other questions? I'm gonna take some green beans, and put them down. I'm going to go ahead and stack my chicken. And then a little bit of our rice here as well. Needless to say, don't forget about your nice lemon pieces. And if I had remembered, I would have asked my neighbor to bring over some parsley so that I could um, go ahead and um, put some sprinkle of fresh um, Italian parsley to go with this beautiful Italian chicken piccata and haricot vert au beurre and some vermicelli rice pasta. Sharon wants to know if the recipe is posted somewhere. Is the recipe posted somewhere? Um, I don't think so, but Sharon, if you email me at tmccall at jwu.edu, I will help you um, get a recipe for this. Any other questions? No? Okay, well thank you. Uh, don't forget that next week, Tuesday, we are having another Cooking with J. Wu Live. Uh, so tune in then at 5.30 next Tuesday, which makes that the, help me out with the date, the 20, 25th, Tuesday the 25th? 3rd. 23rd, Tuesday the 23rd. Yeah, we'll do math here, 17 plus, five, six. 23rd. Um, Natasha York wants to know what kind of dessert you would have with your food. 
Oh gosh. Um, I would have to ask my wife what I, they would have because I'm not a big sweet eater. Uh, I'm a savory guy. Uh, they are sweet girls, uh, both literally and with their dessert choices. But uh, if I'm going to have anything, it would be in the same mindset because I like lemon. So key lime pie, uh, uh, lemon something uh, is really one of my favorites and nothing goes better with anything besides a root beer float, so. Thanks. Right. Well, if that's no other questions, I appreciate you watching this uh, Cooking Live with Jay Wu. Uh, please make sure you tune in again next week and see what else we have for you. If you have any other questions, uh, please don't uh, hesitate to reach out. Uh, you guys have a great evening. Thank you.